Chapter 3 Lainey paused outside the ornate office door. With no idea how the next few minutes would go, she could only hope for the best. She took a final deep breath, squared her shoulders, and pushed open the door. Victoria Bonovich stood in front of the large glass window as Lainey entered the room. You're late. Her cold voice sent a chill down Lainey's spine. I know, ma'am, and I'm so sorry. There was a snafu. I have no time for your snafus. The woman cut her off with a flick of her wrist. Do you have my coffee? Lainey grimaced as she held out the drink. Well, that's what I was trying. We don't try here. We do, or we get fired. She swiped the cup from Lainey's outstretched hand, and before Lainey could say another word, she tilted it back. But her face changed as the coffee hit her tongue, and instead of swallowing it, she spat it out across the floor. What is this disgusting concoction? This is not my drink. Lainey's eyes dropped to the floor and her hands folded together. No, it isn't, but that's what I was trying to tell you. An intern bumped into me at the front door and your coffee spilled. I didn't have time to go and get another one, so I gave you mine. If you'd like, I can go now. The woman's icy eyes regarded Lainey. What I'd like is for you to go and pack your things. No, this couldn't be happening. Dread flooded Lainey, and though she knew she shouldn't, she opened her mouth. But, Madame Bonovich, it was my first mistake. I don't have time for mistakes or incompetence. You have proven you are prone to both. But I need this job. And I need competent people. We're done now. As if to punctuate her statement, Victoria Bonovich walked over to the trash can, held the cup over it with her manicured claws, glanced back at Laney for dramatic effect, and dropped the full cup of coffee into it. Anger burned through Laney, and she bit her lip to keep from saying anything more. Madame Bonovich not only ruled her company, but half of New York. Laney might have lost her job here, but if she pushed the issue, she would never get hired at any other modeling agency in New York. Yes, ma'am. Lainey nodded and backed out of the room. Tears burned at the back of her eyes, but she was not going to let them fall, at least not until she was out of this cursed office. When she reached her desk, she pulled out the box that lived under the right bottom drawer. Every desk came with one as employees didn't last long with Madame Bonovich. Either they quit, or she fired them within a few months' time. Lainey had lasted longer than most. Oh, no. Sophie, the other errand girl, looked at her with sympathetic eyes. What happened? Lainey shrugged and swallowed the lump building in her throat. I was late and didn't have her coffee. Of course, it wasn't my fault, but that didn't matter to her. Hope you don't end up with a job now. Lainey took the few items off her desk and placed them in the box. There weren't many. The agency only allowed five personal items. Lainey had fewer. A photograph of her parents, one of her and her best friends in high school, and one of Dallas Nixon. He had been her crush in high school, though he hadn't known she was alive. Lainey kept it as a reminder to never be invisible again. That was part of why she had taken this job in the first place. She packed them in the small box, wondering with each one what she would do now. Her rent was atrocious, and her paycheck barely covered it each month. She had none in savings, and who knew how long it would take her to find another job. Please tell Myra thank you for all her tips when you see her, and best of luck to you. Lainey said to Sophie as she tucked the box under her arm and headed for the door. Sophie's response was a wide-eyed look full of fear. Though the crowd had thinned a little, Lainey no longer felt the rush as she began the long walk home. People pushed by her, but she hardly noticed as her mind was running through all her possible options. There weren't many. She knew almost no one in the city, even though she had been here for six months. Unlike the city in Texas she grew up in, the people here were less than friendly and kept to themselves more often than not. Lord, I could use some guidance here, she whispered as she entered her apartment. The words felt foreign in her mouth. Lainey hadn't prayed in a while, and part of her wondered if losing her job had been God's way of reaching out to her. She'd been too busy to attend church, and Sundays seemed to be Madame Bonovich's favorite day to require errands. As she shut the door behind her, she noticed the blinking light of the answering machine. Few people use them anymore, preferring cell phones and voicemail instead, but her mother was inept with technology and had insisted on sending her with the answering machine when she moved. Lainey had to look twice because the machine rarely blinked. Few people outside of her work called her, and they all had her cell phone number. Lainey pressed the play button, and her mother's voice filled the room. Is it time to speak now? 
I hope I'm talking at the right time. Lainey, it's your mother. I got a call from an old friend of yours from high school. Uh, Marianne Kim. I guess she didn't have your new number, but she wants to connect with you. I wasn't sure if I should give out your number, but she left hers. It's... Now, where did I put that paper? Oh, here it is. It's 555-923-7555. Wow, that is a lot of fives. Okay, well, I hope this gets to you. I think I just have to hang up, right? Lainey chuckled at her mother's message and shook her head. She reached for the delete button, but curiosity stopped her. What had Marianne wanted? Lainey hadn't been popular in high school, but she'd had a group of friends, brainy misfits like herself who didn't fit in anywhere else and were united by one teacher and a competitive drama league. Nearly every weekend for four years, they had traveled to tournaments where they competed in acting, debating, and speech competitions. Somewhere, Lainey still had a ton of trophies she had won. At one time, she had even considered pursuing teaching if she could coach kids like herself, but then she'd felt the need to be something more, to be noticed. The group had promised to keep in touch after high school, but as they had all gone to separate colleges, it had been hard, and sometime in her sophomore year, Lainey had lost touch with them. She played the message one more time to make sure she had the number right. Then she pulled out her cell phone and punched it in. It rang only once before a breathless voice answered. Hello? Hi, is this Mary Ann? Lainey didn't recognize the voice on the other end, but it had been nearly a decade since she'd spoken with her friend. Yes? Who is this? She'd taken a deep breath, and her voice was all business now. It's Lainey. Lainey Swan? My mother said you called looking for me. Lainey, is it really you? Oh, thank goodness, I was so afraid you wouldn't get my message. Even though it had been years, this voice Lainey recognized. Marianne had been the quiet Korean girl, but when you got her excited, she was like an adrenaline-filled wind-up doll. Her voice ramped up, and she could speak 90 to nothing. Are you still a makeup artist? I thought that's what you were studying after high school, and I didn't make it back for the 10-year reunion. Not sure if you did, but I asked around. Well, with the people I'm still in touch with, mainly through social media, I'm not sure I have anyone's phone number anymore. Lainey chuckled, trying to replay the conversation to see if there had been a question in there. So are you? Marianne repeated. Am I what? Still a makeup artist. Oh, um, how did she answer this? She'd studied makeup and design in college. She'd worked a few jobs after college. Lainey considered herself a makeup artist, but she'd done nothing but hold supplies for a makeup artist for the last six months. Well, I'm kind of between jobs right now, but... Marianne squealed on the other end. Oh my gosh! This is perfect timing. I need you. Well, not me, but the company I work for. See, I work for NGN Studios, and we do a reality TV show and our normal makeup artist decided to take maternity leave early. We're about to film a new season, and we need a makeup artist. I told them I knew someone and that I'd call you and see if you could do it, so can you? Can I what? Lainey's head was spinning. She'd forgotten just how fast Marianne could speak. Can you come to California and be our makeup artist? It'll be super easy, and we'll cover the cost to fly you out here and set you up. Set me up? Yeah, lodging. The show takes four to six weeks to film, usually. Oh my gosh, this will be so much fun. Like our own mini reunion. Four to six weeks? Lainey couldn't be gone four to six weeks. How would she pay her rent? She couldn't possibly leave her life in New York. But as she looked around her tiny apartment, she wondered if that were true. Her kitchen was smaller than her bathroom had been growing up. The living room doubled as her bedroom with a fold-out bed, and none of the walls were decorated. Lainey wasn't sure if that was from lack of effort or lack of time, but what she did know was that her apartment was depressing. So what if she moved? She could pack up her things and put them in storage near her mother, which would be cheaper than renting an apartment. Her lease was up for renewal at the end of the month anyway. She could just not renew, take this job, and start over. Lainey wasn't exactly sure how or what she would do when she started over, but this plan would buy her a little time to figure it out anyway. Okay, I'll do it. Do I have time to stop and see my mom first? I haven't been home in ages, and I need to ask a favor of her. Sure, I'll purchase your ticket and send you all the details. Oh my gosh, this is going to be so much fun!